Hey peeps, Sarah here, and joining me is Arrow because I'm done waiting for a night or a day where he is sleeping and I have time. Say hi. Hi. There you go. All right, so we are here with a digital painting of a fantasy environment landscape in Procreate because you voted for it. I'm gonna like mama. Yep, that's right. I'm gonna show you the whole process and break down three digital painting techniques in detail of how I use them to create environments for concept art. Like, yeah, I just love that. So disclaimer here, I don't work for any specific company. So this- like mama? That's right. So this may not be helpful for people wanting to start a career as a concept artist, but I use my concept art mostly for personal projects and freelance projects, primarily for the purpose of writing fantasy novels and sci-fi. So I will take you step by step how I create texture in my landscapes, how I incorporate photo textures into a digital painting, I will show you how I pull all my colors together at the end, and I will show you how I create bounce light. Everything here is done in Procreate. Is this going to great, Mama? That's right. Which is a little unusual as most concept art is normally accomplished in Photoshop. But I love Procreate for its portability with the iPad and it's just a fun, easy program to learn. With the iPad. Yep, the iPad. Uh, just because it's a fun, easy program to learn compared to Photoshop. I see you! You see me, huh? <laughs> So this first section is just getting the general blocks and shapes in there for my overall composition. This is actually the second version of the scene as I really didn't like my first one, so I felt like I needed a clean slate. One of the coolest things I learned about making environments was how to create depth. The rock formations in the foreground are darker and the ones in the back are lighter and more grayed out. There's actually a little bit of science to this. Particles in the atmosphere, like dirt or water, will make objects in the distance much more subtle because we're looking through all that debris, which is kind of weird to think about, but it makes you feel smarter when you know it. So you will see less detail on things farther in the background. So let me show you how I create texture. You will notice that I experimented with a few different methods to create texture on the mountains in the way back. I even tried to draw out a plan a little bit, but honestly, this doesn't really work for me because I tend to overthink things and I get lost with what makes sense or how it should look. So this technique I'm about to show you is my go-to because it's a bit more random and forces me to not overthink the shape of the mountains. Let's jump over to a new document so we can see it in real time. I learned this from watching other concept artists and I remember having this huge aha moment because it was just so fast and easy and it looked cool. I didn't have to spend hours painstakingly painting every little detail. We'll pick a mid-tone gray and go to the selection tool and freeform. And we're going to draw a silhouette of our mountain shape. Then we will fill it in with a color. This will be our local color, and this is the color it would theoretically be if there were no highlights and no shadows. Now our highlights and shadows will be just a little bit above and a little bit below this local color in the terms of value. As you work your way closer to the front, these circles will get farther apart as the contrast is higher in the foreground. So, um, um, I see you. Now we take a new layer and grab our selection tool on freeform again and scribble all over the mountain. Think of the direction of the rocks. I'm keeping my strokes more vertical, but making sure to cross over. I'm also not doing circles as this would throw off that rocky sort of texture. Once I have my selection, I'm going to grab my highlight color and paint that over with a paintbrush. Using a brush instead of just filling it in gives it a little bit more variety. From here, I can continue to add layers of highlights and shadows until I start to see some shapes, um, shapes that make sense. As an added bonus, sometimes I will grab a photo for texture. I love you, I love you too. And this photo is not replacing the painting, it's just going to add some variety and give it a little bit more of a believable texture. Then I come in with my brush and really accent those highlights and shadows to make it fit my lighting scene. Obviously, if this was the mountains in the farthest back, I may not go as far into detail as this, but you get the picture. So now that I have my roadmap and basic textures laid in, I add some color to my focal point in the center. Now that I look at it, I probably shouldn't have placed it in dead center, but I do have a lot of lines leaning in towards that spot. That'd be great. Basically, I'm just rendering out each plane, trying to bring it all together piece by piece. 
You'll see the same techniques used throughout, and I even use the same scribbly selection on the water. Simply changing the direction of your scribbles gives you a whole different look. I use some photo textures on the rocks in the foreground. I am adding shadows around the edges of the water. I also add some little white strokes around the edges of the rocks where the water meets the landscapes. I'll be honest, I really don't like the cloud formation around the volcano. I messed with it for such a long time before I left it just as is, but I like the little lava streams and water flowing out. Right now I'm going to start pulling all of this together and one of the ways that I do that is by adding a color dodge layer for some interesting color. You can see some of the regions where it appears more red, almost like a hot spot from the sun. And this is so easy to create. It's just one layer. I'll change it back to the normal layer mode and bring the opacity all the way up so you can see what's actually there. I have these bright orangey red colors just painted in and I try to think of the path where the sun would hit as well as where it reflects off the sky in the back and set it to color dodge. Some of this is artistic choice to enhance the appearance of the vignette and draw the eye inward. As kind of a last minute addition, I added a cave in that large rock to the left and then I wanted to add a little ship for a sense of scale. One of the best ways to communicate how big or small something is, is to add an object that people already have a general idea of the size. I kind of have that with the tree above the volcano, but trees can also be deceiving. While boats also come in different sizes, it gives it a little bit more to go off of. As I create the ship, I'm going to show you how I use bounce light to bring everything all together. I start off with my ship and really no extra light has been added besides the main light source. But the thing to remember is that light reflects off of everything to some extent. They've tried to make black paints that absorb a ton of light, but you can expect bounce light in pretty much every situation, especially when it comes to water, since water is highly reflective. I'm imagining that the light is going to hit the water and if that light were a bouncy ball coming towards the ship, where would it bounce off the water and hit the ship? The wooden boards would have some sort of like bluish green light off the water, but there will especially be plenty of light on those white sails. While this can be a rather subtle thing, it is one of the most sure ways to make it look like an object belongs in that environment. Now I also have some interesting light happening in the forward land formation where I want to show some fairies in the grass. So they have just a subtle little glow and I will add some light streaks in the grass where the glow is the strongest. And here's the final result. I hope you all enjoyed this and if you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video diving back into some traditional art. I generally alternate between traditional and digital art for every video because I love how much one complements the other. I apologize everyone for the distraction of my son, but if I didn't just get it done, I probably wouldn't post this video for another month. So, hello. I got to record that here. Say bye, Arrow. Bye, Arrow. <laughs> no, just say bye. Bye. There you go. <laughs> That's all for now, peeps, and I will see you in the next video.